Hey guys, today I'm going to comment on the continuing beef between Tolarian Community College and Unsleeved Media. I thought the beef was over, and I was very surprised that Tolarian Community College is the one to instigate it again. But beef and drama is good for everybody. Um, that is known in our community from day one. When there was drama between the some of the larger YouTubers, Eats Everyone Grows. Kind of like Pewie Dewey Pie, who is the biggest YouTuber, he makes drama against Tease One series, and both of them grow because they have a growing match. So he's actually grown from I think 50 million to 80 million subscribers. So even though he may not be the largest YouTuber anymore, I believe I haven't really kept up with it. He's made multiple videos, he's grown, almost doubled in size. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. So drama sells. Uh, drama is exactly why Mero wanted to vote a cheater, a known cheater in the Hall of Fame. Mero admitted that he was a cheater. Mike Long was a cheater and it was known that he had cheated in multiple events. And to the point that he was like the old Alex Burcini. Luckily for him, not many of his cheats were recorded on camera. Therefore, there's not like stuff to look at over and over again, like there is with Alex. But he's also been a big supporter of Alex. Um, Alex and his girlfriend are being paid by Wizards of the Coast to do Vintage Magic League, to make promotional appearances. Uh, they are heavily promoted, and that's how they get dinner at a nice restaurant in GP Las Vegas while Alex is still banned, by the way, with Rudy, Alpha Investments. So there's always been this concept that drama sells, and the reverse is interesting because Tolarian Community College knows that too. I think he's you know using the reverse of it. So Unsleeved Media is good for the Magic community and especially good for the Weds and the Tolan Community College because he grows their subscriber base and he grows their ability to donate. Many of them will donate to spite him, but what they don't understand is many of Unsleeved Media's or the quarterings, patrons or donors on live stream, they donate to spite them. So everyone wins. And you, the end user, the customer or the donator, get to watch a very amusing and entertaining, it's almost like pay-per-view. And that's what it is. And that's why the drama cycle will never end. Tolerant Community College cannot allow it to end. No matter how much he says he's not involved in drama, he made a video <laughs> during the height of drama title what we owe each other and it pointedly attacked on sleeve media he made a tweet which he as a english professor as an english community co college part-time professor knows is illogical there's no way that anyone who graduated with a master's in english in arizona state can think that one GP is a clear indicator that the stats for a whole year is wrong from Channel Five Bowl themselves. So Channel Five Bowl themselves said that they were down eight percent in 2018. Eight percent, which is a large amount for GPs, and then he's saying, "Oh, look at this one event. It sold out." <laughs> And he doesn't tell you how many spots there were, what the how big the venue was. Is that like a good number compared to an O number? Was it 100 spots, 1,000, 10,000? Who knows? And then you get this cycle again, which is good for everybody. It's good for both of them because Tolarian's mentioned on sleeve. On sleeve is mentioned Tolarian. And if you don't like Unsleeve, you're sub to Tolarian. Like, oh, who's this Tolarian guy? I really hate Unsleeved and I just follow him because I hate him. Oh, I'll follow Tolarian. I'll donate some money to make him mad. And then vice versa. Hence why the drama can never, ever end. It's a cycle of 
I don't want to say like mutual benefit, but really it is a mutual benefit. It is a cobia. What was it called when uh, two creatures have to live off each other? Um, they don't co-inhabit. That's something else. It's like a symbi symbiotic relationship. Both people prosper and they have. And you see smaller dramas arise every so often between so and so, bad boy games on sleep media. And, you know, it, it's quite fascinating when you take a look at it and you step back and you really take a look at all this stuff. And you see, like, oh, this drama, that drama, this drama, that drama. And look at how much uh, these subscribers have gained on both sides. So this was a pretty low blow uh, from Tolarian. Uh, it was not necessary in my opinion. And the way that it was said, so if he said it more vaguely, it could also mean Rudy because Rudy said that GP attendance sucks and he's not going to attend GPs anymore. He said that many times. So, but the way that it was said was very childish um, from the way that it was cap locked. I mean, again, he's an English major and he's, doing that to convey emotion right emotion there's no facts in that tweet there's not this many people signed up versus this many people last year or this many people at the most recent gp or this was an increase of some amount it was just that it was sold out i would say selling out a gp is actually not a good sign because that means somewhere logistically speaking when you sell out a main event you never want to turn down customers, and that's what you're doing. Magic is not in a good place now. Even if the numbers tell you, it's not. Because it is based solely... 2018 was a year to reprint. We have Masters 25 to celebrate 25 years of Magic. We had Ultimate Box Toppers. Ultimate Masters. Mythic Edition, Planeswalkers Edition. What was it? What do we also get like a different masters? Do we get iconic in that year or would you got something else? I'm trying to think. We got Battle Bond recently. Oh, maybe Battle Bond on Unstable. Challenger decks. More commander decks. Commander's anthology. Plane Chase anthology. Blank blank anthology. Anthology of anthology. And my goodness, we're still getting these giant reprints. Uh, the Mythic Edition of Rav Ravnica Allegiance just came out. That is eight reprints, right? You're getting eight guaranteed Mythic Planeswalkers, which everyone can get who can spend $250 worth uh, tax. One of the things um, that I would say is you can't rely on that forever. That's a very good way to make a lot of money, but that's not a good way to make money from new customers. New customers are not going to be interested in Ultimate Masters for $300, $350 a box. They're not going to be interested in buying these Ultimate Masters box toppers, which can be searched. They're not going to be interested in a Commander Anthology or Plane Chase Anthology. I mean, these things are not in their price range. They're not going to be interested in reprint masters 25. There's no value. Iconic masters. It just doesn't make sense. A new player with a limited budget just wants to draft or play limited or play or go to F and M and play, you know, a deck. So yeah. I don't see any products. You might see challenger products are for new players, but they rotate out immediately. So clearly they're not for new players unless the point was to try to get all the new players money until the next rotation. I would say challenger products is very deceiving. It seems like they're helping new players, but really they're not. For a new player to actually make a valid deck with all the challengers, they would have to buy, the, they, there was one deck with one fatal push. So they would need to buy that one. They need to buy four copies of that. So that's $120 already. They would need to buy four copies of the Hazret deck with, so four copies of that, and then all the $120. And 
And if they wanted to make Mardu vehicles, they would need to buy the vehicle deck, four copies of that. $360 for a mildly okay deck that will last you about two months. That has no modern playability. The cards are not going to survive modern. Chandra did not survive modern. Hazrat did not. Fatal Push did, but it took a massive beating after a rotated standard. This is not a way to draw new players. Uh, new players are not going to be incredibly impressed by your masterpieces, which until re recently rotated out, because they're never going to get masterpieces. They're not going to be impressed by your reserve list policy. And in fact, they're not going to be impressed by a physical card game. These new players are playing Minecraft, Fortnite, League of Legends. They are used to instantaneous gratification. They are used to team play. They're used to socializing online. MTG Arena is the future of Magic, and I'm very bullish on that, but I am absolutely not bullish. As a Magic the Gathering store owner, I'm considering dropping Magic entirely. I can tell you I've dropped Magic boxes because, like I said, if you can buy a Mythic Edition box from Hasbro right now, which you can because they have ample supply for you guys, for $250, why would you ever buy a box from me? Why would you buy two boxes and a fat pack from me for 250 when I can't even guarantee you four Planeswalkers, let alone eight full art, alternative art Planeswalkers? You wouldn't. it. You never would. As long as Wizards of Coast sells the Mythic Editions and they're available, no store should be able to sell a box. Unless that customer is an idiot. Right? Because... If you look at the original Mythic Edition, which we can look at, they give you a $100 box topper, and now you can sell it for $700. For $250, you get $800 of value. Tell me a local game store where I can pay $250, and in two months or three months, or in a new set, three months, I can get $800 of value from what I purchased for $250 90 days from now. The answer is nobody. Nobody. So, we have an eternal argument between is magic failing, is magic dying, dying, which Tolarian will say no, but which Unsleeve will say yes. The reason Tolarian will say no is because his whole brand depends on Magic the Gathering. The reason Unsleeve will say yes is because his does not. So, whose, do you trust, whose opinion do you trust more? The person who is reliant on being on good behavior or the person who has nothing to lose. Always bet on a person who has nothing to lose because they will shock you and they will surprise you. At the end of the day, they tend to be a little bit more honest than a person who has everything to lose, who will use every deception, every trick. I mean, the majority of the professors... Uh, subscribers, they think that one G because one main event GP is sold out and it's being promoted everywhere, that this means Magic is growing. That is not true. That is statistical fallacies. There's all over the place. Maybe because 2018 was so bad, they booked a venue which was smaller and it was easier to sell out. Maybe the venue was just smaller to begin with, and GP in New Jersey is located in a smaller venue than other GPs. I don't know. But I can tell you, Channel Fireball said that in 2018, GP attendance was down 8% from the prior year. That's a number that is a fact. You cannot say that one selling out one main event at a GP is an indicator that GPs are now more popular than they were before. Maybe there's just more people in New Jersey who want to play Magic. It obviously benefits the professor 
to say that magic is growing. This gives his brand more growth. One of the more fascinating points that uh, has yet to be addressed between these two is how their political ideology does influence whether or not they like each other. And you have seen a great divide in our magic community from the local game stores to it just comes down to money. As a business owner, great. You know, I, I feel, you know, I don't feel that proud that Wizard Coast is promoting this and X and Y and Z and they're helping do this character and this character is trans and that character is purple and this character is blue and this character is a hermaphrodite. You know, like, great, great, great. But when I can't make money because Wizard of Coast is undercutting me with this Mythic Edition, I, as a business person, am going to be pissed. And if my GP attendance is down and my FNM attendance is down, then I'm going to be pissed because there comes a point where you know, eight people, four people, where does it go down to? If they cut my prize support, they take away my FNM promo, I'm going to be upset. If the promos for the showdown are being sold to people like Unsealed Media, Unsealed uh, MTG, who gets them early, he actually had prize packs open on his channel before the pre-release. Let me repeat that again. He had these showdown packs open on his channel before the pre-release. And everyone in their mother gets product early now. Why is that the case? Because the stores just don't give two blanks. They don't care if they're caught or not. The best thing for, I was talking to my friend, the best thing for my friend's uh, retro game store was that he w got caught that he didn't get a play space. And then WPN, they took away the WPN and he said that was the best thing that ever happened to him because then he, you know, there was no benefit to being in the WPN. So not only are you selling to, against Sports and War, which is a distributor, you're selling against Wizard of Coast itself. And of course, Wizard of the Coast is going to give yourself a better product. When's the last time the Wizard of the Coast would give a store a Mythic Edition and the Wizard of the Coast would sell a package of two booster boxes and a fat pack for $250? they are not going to do that because that would never sell. Anyway, bye guys. <laughs>